Hello everyone, welcome to the second week of scientific programming in Python. And this will be the first lecture where we actually talk about programming in Python and get into real Python stuff. Um, in this first lecture, we will look at simple data types, basic operators, um, collections in Python and simple control flows. So this will not go into the deeper, um, more specific uh, things in Python. This will be covered in next week um, where we talk about advanced Python. This lecture will be held inside a Jupyter notebook. So um, we have these documentation cells and code cells so that we can talk about the code directly and um, execute code while talking about um, what it does. This lecture will be uploaded on GitHub, so you can find uh, this lecture on the in the lectures repository on GitHub. If you want to um, try things out yourself or just play around with uh, what was shown in the lecture. All right, so let's get into Python. Um, starting with basic types in Python, every type in uh, Python is an object. So op uh, Python is a very object oriented programming language. Um, similar as Java, but in comparison to Java, we don't always need objects and classes to do something. In Java, we need to create a class, for example, even to execute a Hello World program. Whereas in Python, you can just write print Hello World and it will do that. Um, so Python is a lot simpler regarding the object oriented programming, but um, has basically the same functionalities in that regard. All right, so let's start with the easiest data types um, there are. So pretty much uh, integers, floats, strings, and booleans. And uh, these are also the only data types in Python that can be uh, initialized with literals. So um, for initializing an integer, for example, you just write the number. And here we can start with the first one. So if we just write two and execute this, we see we get two back. Um, when executing a cell in Jupyter Notebooks, um, whatever is last in the uh, cell, so the last line of the cell, will be printed um, below. If the last line of a uh, notebook cell is evaluated to none, it will not be printed. So if you write um, none here, nothing will be printed, but everything else will show below. Okay, so this is an integer and Python will know that this is an integer because um, it can look at the value and find out that this should be an integer. Then looking at the next example, this is a float. And if we execute this, we also get um, the float printed below and Python will internally know that this is a float. So we don't have to specify that this was a float and the example above was an integer, but Python will find that out itself. Next up, we have booleans. So this is a false and um, it starts with a capital F. In comparison to C++ and Java, um, I believe there it starts with a lowercase f and same with the true. So true in Python is also uppercase. Um, lowercase version doesn't work. It's a name error. True lowercase is not defined. All right. And um, as I said before, every type every value in Python is an object and uh, we can check that with the ins is instant method. So if we execute this method and uh, pass two parameters, the first one being the value we want to uh, evaluate, the second one being the class we want to check it for, then it will return true or false uh, whether the object we passed is actually um, of the type that was the second argument. So if we look at this line here, it will do three things. It will call is instance for two and object, for 2.0 and object, and for true and object. And this object class is a predefined class in Python of which every other class is derived. So every object in Python um, has the super class object. So if we execute this, this will return true three times, meaning that all of these three um, values are actually of the data type object. Now, if we want to check what uh, functionalities one object has, 
there is a very handy function called dir. And if we run this and pass some object to it, it will print out a list containing all the names of functions and attributes that this object has. If we do that for true, for example, we get a long list of functions um, that we could run on this. And for now, you don't have to care about these double underscore uh, functions because we will get into those in next week. But um, for now, we can see that we have some um, other functions down here which uh, can be used to um, look at different representations of this uh, boolean, for example. Okay, so next up we have string. And the string is the only way in Python to represent characters. There is no character class um, like in C or in Java, but they're just our strings. So um, if you want to have just a single character, you will have to create um, a string with just one character. Strings are initialized um, with double quotes or single quotes. So we can um, write double quotes and inside these double quotes, um, we will have the string. So if we execute this, it will print the string um, because that's the last value in the cell. Then um, if we use double quotes to define the string, um, a nice feature is that we can use single quotes inside and um, it will print these single quotes without having a syntax error um, or a problem of par parsing this. And this is because it knows that if the string started with a double quote, then it has to end with one, and then it doesn't care about the single quotes inside. Um, these strings with just single double quotes uh, will not work for multiple lines. So if you include a new line in this string, you'll get a syntax error. But if you want to create a string with new lines in there, you can uh, use these triple double quotes and then um, yeah, you can include new lines and you can even include normal double quotes in there as well. So if we execute this, you can see that um, it displays it as just one line, but it added these backslash n and the backslash uh, single quote in there, which means that um, it successfully found these new lines and added a like, new line character for that. So the backslash n is the new line character and the backslash um, tells Python to escape the n and use it as a new line. So if we would print this string, um, actually print it and not just let it display by Jupyter, then it would include these new lines. Yeah, then coming to printing, um, we have this print function. So we don't always have to put something we want to print as the last statement in a Jupyter notebook, but we can also use the print function, of course. And since Python 3, print is actually a function. Before, in, uh, before that, in Python 2, uh, print was a keyword. And um, the only difference for you is that you have to include uh, parentheses um, because it's a real function call now. But I guess that's not too much of a dis disadvantage. So if we execute this cell, we get uh, three prints. First, we print 2, 3.0, and then false. And this print function will print whatever is passed to it. Um, it will also add a new line. So as you can see, these were all printed on new lines and not just um, in one line. And um, yeah, everything we pass to this function will be converted, uh, converted to a string internally. So there are different functions for different objects that convert um, these objects into strings. And the print function will internally call this um, string representation function. And uh, here, if we call print with a one, one is an integer, um, and normally we can't print integers, but what Python will do is call a string of one and then use that to print. So these two lines will do exactly the same thing, <coughs> just that in the first line, uh, print is called with an integer, and in the second line, it's called with a string containing an integer. So it will basically just print one. All right, then coming to variables. Um, variables are very easy in Python. We don't have to declare any types like in C++ or Java, but we just write a name and then an equals and a value. So um, Python will figure out the type on its own and we don't have to um, predefine what exactly this uh, type will be. 
and we can actually also um, do this dynamically during the runtime. So, uh, for example, we can reuse old variables with different types. And um, we can, for example, initialize a variable as an integer and then later decide that it should now be a string. Uh, this is not possible in Java or C++. This is, um, on the other hand, possible in Python because it's dynamically typed. More on that later. So this cell um, initializes three variables, a, b, and c, and they get the values uh, two, hello, and true. So Python will know that the first variable should be an integer, the second variable should be a string, and the third one should be true. Uh, should be a boolean uh, with a value true. And we can print all of these variables just as above, um, but now we pass the variable and not the actual literal that we had before. So executing this, we just get what we expect. All right, and now we have an exercise. And if this works, there should be um, a question displayed on your screen soon. Um, we haven't tried this. We had tried it in a toy example, but we're not 100% sure how well it will work. Um, hopefully it will work, but then you should be able to answer that and the video will be paused. Um, with this question of having uh, two variables, um, a and b, and we first say a equals 1, then we say b equals a, and then we say a equals 2. And now the question is, what is the value of b? Hopefully there should be the question popping up now. Okay, hopefully that worked. Um, and I will show, the, show you the solution now. And the solution is hello. Um, yeah, this is a mistake. I forgot to execute this cell. Uh, if I execute this first, the hello was from up here. We said b equals hello. Um, it should ex actually be one. Uh, so I just forgot to execute this cell. Um, and yeah, why is the value of b one? We said a equals one, and then we said b equals a. So here, Python took the value of a and assigned it to b, and there b became one. And then we changed a to two, but this doesn't, uh, doesn't affect b, of course, because b just gets the value of a and is not actually the same, um, like the same variable. Yeah, I hope that is clear, um, but it's the same in every programming language, basically. So this shouldn't be too surprising for you. Um, yeah, just a quick note on naming conventions for these variables um, and other other names in Python. There is the PEP8 naming conven convention. PEP stands for Python Enhancement Proposal. And the number eight is just um, the definition for how things should be named inside Python code. There are uh, lots of other definitions um, in the PEP. Uh, which are concerned with different things, but this PEP8 one is especially uh, useful for actually writing code because it defines how you should name the variables. Um, this is not strict, so Python will not check if you named them correctly, but it's just a convention that everyone should follow so that um, Python code is easily translatable and uh, everyone can understand what a variable or what a name in Python does by just looking at how it's written. And for example, here we have some uh, important ones like class names and class names are camel case. So the words start uh, with a capital letter and uh, yeah, every new word gets a capital letter again. Then methods are all lowercase and words are connected by underscores. Uh, same as with functions. Now we have global um, constant variables and these should be um, all uppercase and words co uh, connected with underscores. Um, yeah, and then we have different um, variable uh, types of variables, which should all be um, lowercase and connected with underscores. And uh, yeah, we will also follow this PEP8 naming convention in the lectures and hope that, we, uh, that you will also do that in the homeworks because yeah, conventions um, for names are always nice to understand uh, what code does. Yeah, so now getting to typing. Um, as I said before, Python is dynamically typed. This means that uh, variables can change type over the runtime of a program. 
um, but Python is also strongly typed. And what strongly typed means is that objects themselves will not change type. So if we have um, an object of the class animal, for example, it will always be of the class animal and will not change to integer, for example. Um, whereas if we have a variable which is um, of the type animal, then it can change later. But note that it actually doesn't change the object. So the object will still stay the, stay the same in the background, but just the name for this object, the variable name, will um, have a different type afterwards. Okay. Um, yeah, we can check the type of objects in Python dynamically. Um, this is very useful for, um, for example, checking different types of parameters you get in a function because when defining a function, we don't know yet what the type will be because you could pass anything to this function. Python doesn't check this. Uh, we can use this type function and pass an object and this will return us the name of the type it has. So type of true returns us bool and bool stands for boolean so true is of the data type boolean and we could pass anything here and it will always tell us uh, what the corresponding type of this object is. Um, yeah, and here is just an example of dynamic typing uh, where we create a variable a of the type integer um, with a value 1 and then we print the type of this variable then we reassign um, another value to this variable and it's a string hello and then we print the type again so this should print integer and then string um, which is kind of special for programming languages because um, some big ones are um, are not dynamically typed meaning that um, variables that are created once can't change the value afterwards and it can change the type afterwards they can change the value but not the type um, yeah but this is possible in python okay and this wraps up the first video uh, in this lecture and in the next one we'll go over to basic operators